ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه وسلم اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير حج حج محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والشر امور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته كيف حالكم جميعا يا ايها الاخوه الحمد لله today's talk or this morning talk with the Allah which is a daily dose is a reminder for myself and you all it's only be fitting after talking about the mahar the bridal money for al jannah in yesterday's talk it's only be fitting that we talk about the mahar and that dunya and that the mahar because jannah has a mahar as well as the dunya has a mahar in the mah of jannah we discovered that as ibn qayyim explained walhamdulillah we discovered that that mahr is nothing other than al iman wal amal salih is the belief in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his righteous actions so the opposite of that the mahr for the dunya is none other than the deen itself and this is based off the statement of al hasan al basri uh rahimahullah we mentioned that the dunya that the mahr the bridal money given to the dunya will be nothing but your deen and is it worth it for you to pay we're going to start off with some verses bi idnillah and then we will mention a hadith and then go into the works or the words of ibn qayyim al jawziyah rahmatullah ta'ala alayh about this particular topic as far as the verses allah azza wa jalla says يَوْمَ يَتَذَكَّرُ الْإِنسَانُ مَا سَعَى وَبُرِّزَتِ الْجَحِيمُ لِمَن يَرَى فَأَمَّا مَن طَغَى وَآثَرَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا فَإِنَّ الْجَحِيمَ لِمَن إِنَّ الْجَحِيمَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى So Allah Azza wa Jal in these verses Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala he says on the day that man would think about what he had put forth meaning that is going to come a time that everything that you've done in this dunya will be brought to a halt brought to a halt everything that you and I do is being recorded so it's going to come a time that you're going to be made to remember what you put forth in the life of this world allah says fa am fa burrizat al jahima li man yara so Allah says and then the hellfire will be made to be seen in plain sight in plain sight. Allah is going to bring forth the hellfire so that the people can see it. And if you don't know, there are two books that will be given. There are the book that's going to be given to the people on their right hand, and that is the book that will be given by Allah Azza wa Jal fi al-liyin when the angels will give and take them up to the heaven at your at your soul pass away the angels as it comes in authentic narration. they will take you up to the heaven Allah Azza wa Jal will present to you your book and then there's another time where the book will be given and that is the time of the jisr when you have to cross the sirat this is the belief of ahl sunnah wal jamaa and it's not the time or the place here to go into the different narrations that prove these are the two different times that the book will be given then Allah Azza wa Jal says fa amma man taqa and as for he who transgresses as for he who transgresses and went beyond the bounds which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set forth for him Allah says wa athar al hayat al dunya and his transgressing contains within it the preferring of the life of this dunya over that of the hereafter thinking that the life of this dunya was enough and that it wasn't going to be anything else after it that he placed all of his stakes all of his chips he bet it on a losing horse so to speak wa athar al hayat al dunya fa inna al jahim hi al ma'wa allah says so the jet so so the abode for this individual 
which would be nothing but a despicable abode and me born befitting for this person is that it would be the blazing fire. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from that, I mean. It comes in the hadith that's collected by Muslim that the Prophet وسلم, he says, Badiru bil a'mal. يعني الأعمال الصالحة كما قال الشيخ بن باس رحمة الله تعالى لي في تعليقه على هذا الحديث. It comes in the hadith is collected by Muslim that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he says hasten to do good hasten to do deeds. Shaykh bin Ibaz he comment and he said that meaning do righteous deeds. He says يصبح الرجل فيها مسلما First he says, Fitnatan kal Fitnatan kal uh uh kal He says, We're in this fitna that would take place at this time, it would be like a piece of darkness. It would be so dark that you probably cannot even see your hand if you put your hand in it. That's how tremendous in uh uh in tribulation this time would be. He's describing a time that would take place, and I want you to see what's going to take place in that time. And I want you to look at that and really ponder and reflect. He says, hasten to do good deeds before there comes a fitna that's going to be like the pieces of darkness. And then he describes what that fitna going to be. He says, Yusbihu rajulu fiha musliman. Where in the morning an individual will be a Muslim, will be a believer. But by the time the evening come in, he have left his deen. In the morning, literally in the morning, they believed in Allah and by the even they disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is not the time to go into this hadith. But I want you to pay attention to the implications of this hadith. Then he says, Wa yusbihu. He says, Wa yumsu mu yumsi mu'minan wa yusbihu kafiran. Where in the evening a person can be a believer, but by the time the morning comes, a person is a disbeliever. And he says, Yubi'u dinuhu. Be min dunya that he will sell the life of this world, his deen. He will sell his deen to achieve some type of temporary pleasure from the life of this world. He will sell his deen to achieve some type of temporary pleasure from the life of this world. It doesn't equate up into intelligence. This hadith is collected by Muslim. Ibn Qayyim al Juziyah, he continues. After telling us about the Mahav Jannah, he goes in to tell us about the Mahav Dunya and the people who prefer it over Jannah. He says, Umirat bihim hadid diyaru wa afqaf afarat minhum rubu'u al-ilmi wal imani had aatharu al-dunya wa ladda ta'ayshaha al-fani ala al-jannati wal-ridwani sahibu al-amani ya wabtulu bihududhihim wa radu bikulli madallatim wa hawani kadahan wa kaddan la yufattaru anhuma fihi min ghammin wa min ahzan والله لو شاهدت هاتيك الصدور رأيتها كمراجل النيران ووكودها الشهوات والحصرات والآلام لا ملا تخنو مدى الأزمان لا تخبو مدى الأزمان أبدانهم أجدات هاتيك النفوس لا قد خبرت مع الأبدان أروا وحهم في وحشة وجسوسهم في كدحها لا في رضا الرحمن هربوا من الرق الذي خلقوا له فبلوا برق النفس والشيطان لا ترضى مختارهم لنفوسهم وقد ارتضوا بالذل والهرمان لا سوات الدنيا جناح بعوضة لم يسق منها رب ذا الكفران لكنها والله أحقر عنده من ذا الجناح القاصر طيران ولقد تولت بعد عن أصحابها فالسعد منها حل في الدنيا 
الدبران لا يرتجى منها الوفاء لصبها عين الوفاء من غادر خوان تبيت على كدر فكيف تنالها صفوا أهذا قط في الإمكان يا عاشق الدنيا تأهب للذي قد ناله عشاق كل زمان أو ما سمعت بلا ورأيت مصاري العشاق من شبيب من شبان قال الله عظيم so in these line of poetry, this is all taken from a tremendous book, which is known as Qasida to Nunia. That's like the nickname for it. It got a big, long name other than that. And it's a tremendous poem that was authored by Ibn Qayyim that deals with the Aqidah to Ahl al-Sunnati wa Jama'ah. However, in regards to this, he continuing his speech. He says, Umirat bihim had diyaru wa afqarat minhum rubu'u al-ilmi wal-imani. Umirat bihim shi'ra thimeen rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi comment on this line of poetry. He says, Meaning, He's talking about the living, the living of the people who prefer the life of this world over that of the Akira. They're living and residing into this dunya. He's talking about their living. He said, Umirat, meaning they spend their lives, okay, in this diyar. And this, they spend their lives in this diyar. He says, And they are like the most deprived, the most impoverished. Min whom from amongst them, Rubu Ul, one fourth of knowledge in Iman. He says, Call the Athar Dunya Walad that Aishi Halfani Allah Janati Wa Rudwani. And he describes, he says that in the next line of poetry, he says, These are the individuals who have preferred the life of this world and the enjoyment of a temporary life, right? Allah Janati over guardings. Warudwani in the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to stop right here. We see that Hollywood has placed in there a lot of films and different things, and they show you a lot of decorated things. You, you know, you see Avatar, you see Lord of the Rings, and you think all of these things is okay and magnificent. So you watch these different things that are taking place. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed four guardings, and then there are more guardings on top of that. As Ibn Qayyim, he's used this as a prelude, just an introduction before he start going into describing Jannah. By the way, this is the section where he's before he's going into start the beginning to describe the descriptions of paradise. And we can't even imagine the description of paradise. So here an individual, just the fact that you will take something that is very short and lasting, that everything in it, if you take and go inside your house right now, open up your refrigerator, you have an expiration date on most of the things and the items inside your refrigerator. If you go inside your pantry or even inside your shelves and you go inside and open up the shelves, you're going to see an expiration date. Even your bread that you just got two days ago, it has an expiration date. Everything that you look at got an expiration date, which is a sign and an indication as it comes in the hadith about the angel when he told Musa alayhi salam that not the gray hair is a sign, it's an expiration date. Everything has an expiration date. As Allah says, Everything on it should perish. And what should remain is the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if this is the case, that this dunya by the very nature is perishable, that's the nature of the dunya itself. Not the fact that it's lowly and this base and despicable, but that it's perishable. And if that's the case, that it is perishable, how can you prefer something that is very short temporarily over that which is everlasting. How can you prefer? This is Wala Hassan al-Basri. He says what? Rahimahullah. He says that is not, he says sell your short life for that which is everlasting. But if you sell your everlasting life and you give up both that which of your short life and your everlasting life. And then he went on to mention how the dunya it has a maha and it want nothing from you but your deen. That's the price of playing the game of life. Playing this game that they got us playing out here, this rat race, there's different things. The price of it is to sacrifice your deen. It is to give up your morality. It is to give up your ethics. It is to give up your morals. It is to give up your understanding. And that intelligence with them is the opposite of intelligence with iman. That true intelligence, it weighs both things. It weighs that which is temporary over and that which is everlasting, and it places that which is everlasting over that which is temporary. It does not lose sight of its focus. This is true intellect. But to them, true intelligence plays shahawat, as he's going to explain. It places desires over that which is 
truthful, which is not magic, which is not a game. Do you understand? He's going to describe the hal for us now. As he continues, Shaykh Uthameen, he says in his second poetry, he says, So they, this, this is the reason why. When they chose to prefer to give the maha to the dunya, they were not able to be concerned with righteous actions, nor with iman. So in a nutshell, they couldn't offer the dari to Jannah. They it couldn't. By them just preferring the dunya, they, what they did is they have removed from themselves the opportunity to pay the mahar for Jannah. The mahar for Jannah, as we discovered yesterday, was nothing but what? Iman wal amal salih. Shikr they mean is saying here, they're preoccupying with the dunya and preferring the dunya has caused them not to concern themselves with righteous actions and Iman. So they can't even give the mahar for the Jannah. So henceforth, they are going to be prohibited from entering the Jannah. You see this? Allah Azza wa Jalla, Allahu Akbar. You don't have to think about Allah as being unfair. He can never be unfair. Do you understand that? As Allah is not being unfair. He's showing you that they have prefer to give up the mahar for the, the jannah over that for the dunya. Then he says, dunya." The only concern that they had was only the life and pleasures and the delights of this world. That's the only thing they seek. And most of us, if we don't really pay attention, if you look at the percentage of those who are from the rich and famous, there are a small percentage from those in the world. And you look at it, most of us spend our lives chasing something that they have placed in front of us like this is the life to live. The picket fence, the White House, this is what you're supposed to get. And you are not going to reach it. But you spend your life they dangle it in front of you you think this is actually what it's supposed to be. So you rigorously tire yourself out. You break friendships. You break family relations. You break ties. You do whatever you can do. You jeopardize your deen. You jeopardize your honor. Your honor. You jeopardize your integrity. You jeopardize everything about yourself just so that you can be from this elite group. That when you find out that that elite group, as he's going to tell you, as you find out that elite group is not so elite that you think they are, he's getting ready to describe that. They're not so elite as you think they are. Look at the price of the dunya. We always talking about depression. We always talking about sadness. We always talking about grief. There was none of these things. They never did exist in Jannah. Do you know that? Your parents never experienced any of this. So that shows you first and foremost that this depression and all that stuff is tied to this dunya, this lowly place. It wasn't doing a Jannah. Adam Alayhi didn't experience that. Your mother didn't experience that. So that let you know that if you want to pay the price of this dunya, then this is what you want. And no one can escape it. I don't care how rich you is, they can't escape depression. No one can escape it except those who have this firm iman. Those four qualities of Allah, as the Wajal says, Wal-asr, inna al-insana lafihi khasr, illa al-ladheena amanu wa amilu salihati wa tawasaw bil haqqi wa tawasaw bil sabr. That's the four characteristics that allow you to navigate through life. You don't even get it. Henceforth, Iman Shafi is famously ascribed to him that he says, what? Have the lobbyville this sore been sufficient? It would have been sufficient. Why? Because these are the four things you need to navigate through life. Also, from the four things you need to navigate through life, I don't know if you caught it, is the Maharfa Jannah. Is the Maharfa Jannah. And the very right first thing, Illa ladina amanu, that's Iman. Wa amilu salihat, that's righteous actions. That's the Maharfa Jannah. Tayyip. He says, وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ حَيَاتَ الطَّيِّبَةِ لَا تَقْتَدِي كَثْرَةَ الْمَالِ وَلَا كَثْرَةَ أَوْلَادِ وَلَا قُصُورَ مُشَيَّدَةِ So Shikrat Amin, he continues. He says, know that a tayyibah, a good life, حَيَاتَ الطَّيِّبَةِ A good life does not necessitate abundance of wealth, nor abundance of children, nor palaces or mansions, or lofty places, or lofts, or this place. He says, He said, rather the toyibah that's described here with good life, it's referring to the good life of the per person who, who what, even if he is the most poor of people, and that contained in two things. It starts with the qalb. All right, it starts with the qalb. Like we said before earlier, you're going to see Ibn Qayyim going to describe the, the qalb of those who are the rich and famous, those who prefer this world, he's going to give us an inside look to their qalb, inshallah. Briefly, as a kid, he's not Allah, but he's going to show you what comes from that. Pay attention. 
Say we had Alam Yakullah Azza wa Jal. Shaykh Uthameen said, for this reason, Allah does not say, pay attention. Man amila salihan min dakarin aw umza wa huwa mu'minun fala narzuqannahu. In the ayat, Allah Azza wa Jal does not say in Surah Al Nahl, verse 97, Surah 16, verse 97, Allah does not say, whoever does righteous deeds, whether he male or female, right? And he is a believer that we should certainly provide for him. Allah doesn't say that. He doesn't say that you, whether you're male or believer, just you, all you have to do is righteous deeds and believe. Iman and Amal al-Salih. You see, you see the two? That all oh, he's going to provide for them. Allah didn't say that. He says, He says, meaning with abundance of wealth and abundance of children and a beautiful home to live in. No. He says, rather, he says, Rather, we should cause him to live a hayat al tayyibah we should cause him to live a hayat al tayyibah What is the prerequisites to live a hayat al tayyibah What is the prerequisites? Iman and amal al-salih. What did the Prophet Wasallam say? Badirul bil a'mal. Do righteous deeds. What is this world for? It's for you to do a'mal salihah. What did Allah say? Alladhi what? Huwa alladhi khalaqakum. Right? Huwa alladhi khalaqal mawta wal hayati liyabaluwakum ayyukum ahsanu amala. Allah says he is the one who created the death and the life for what? So that he can test you and see who? And see that what? Which one of you are best in deeds? So this place, this dunya is a testing ground. It's examination. For what? Doing righteous deeds. Seeing the deeds that you're going to put forth is like a bridge, if you will. It's a bridge from this life to the accurate. That's all it is. And once the true and king intelligent person recognizes that, he knows that he don't got time to play. He's rolling up his sleeve. Henceforth, you can respect the position of Ibn Uqayyim when he says he's going to break his fast, Yom Qiyamah. He's going to fast from disobedience of Allah as a wajal continuously until he meet his rub. Why? Because he knows that this is a short life, but it's a bridge to take him from here and there. Deep. Shikha Dameen doesn't stop. So will have the ahyan and tajidu mu'min and taqiyya walaw kana min afkar ibadil lahi tajidu min atyab al nasu qalban. You hear this? <laughs> he said, for this reason you will find, sometimes you will find that a believer who is pious, who is upright, he have taqwa, walaw kana min afkar ibadil lahi, even if he is the most, from the most poorest of people in finances, right, from the servants of Allah, you will find him to be the most pleasant of people in his heart. He doesn't have rancor. There's no animosity. There's no jealousy. There is no hatred. There is no uh, being boggled down with grief, sadness. There's no bad thoughts of the Creator. It's a qalbin, it's a qalbin that is saleen. Do you understand? Allah Azza wa Jal says, يَوْمُ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ on the day that neither wealth nor children will benefit them except for he who comes to Allah with a qalbin salim. So we should cause him to live a hayat al tayyibah. What is a hayat al tayyibah? Is it wealth? Is it palaces? Is it mansions? Is it cars? Is it this? What is a hayat al tayyibah? No, it's being content. Within your own call, most people can't achieve it. They will spend a fortune to achieve a hayat al tayyibah. Most people can't do it. He's going to explain how. Sahibul amaniya wa btalu bi huduzihim wa radu bi kulli madallatin wa hawani. Right? Ibn Qayyim explains. He says, they are people of long procrastinating hopes. They are people who are given into wishes and hopes. This is what they do. And they are pleased with every type of delight that comes their way. Shaykh Uthameen said, meaning they live upon hopes. And they don't have nothing other but this. That's all they have. He says, Indeed, the Prophet وسلم, he says, He said that the one who was agis, the one who was incapable, the one who was incapable, he says, This individual is the one who allowed himself to follow his own desires. And he placed long, um, useless hopes in Allah. The misconception that many of us have. And this is what we have done. We have allowed social media to make us seem and appear a certain way that we are. 
And what we did is we placed up all of the posters of, oh, Allah is going to forgive me. You can talk about me. You know, this, this, and that. But Allah is what y'all knows. Alhamdulillah, glad that my Lord can forgive me. All of this stuff. But the same, same time ain't changing not a bit. Not changing nothing. Still doing the same exact thing. Ibn Al-Qayyim explained that this right here is bad thoughts of Allah. This is called bad thoughts of Allah. You keep thinking you're going to bank on Allah's forgiveness. You keep thinking you're going to bank on His compassion. You keep thinking you're going to bank on His mercy. And you keep forgetting that He should deed the iqab. There's a reason He should deed the iqab. Huh? In the batasha rabbika la shadeed. Huh? You keep forgetting that the grass and the seeds of your Lord Jalla is shadeed. How are you forgetting that? That you keep thinking it's all about mercy, forgiveness, and compassion. No, he gave you the time that's allotted for you for that mercy, compassion. But the fact that you have been deceived, that think you're going to keep doing what you're doing and still thinking good thoughts of Allah, say, yeah, Allah is what Jalla is going to still forgive me. What do you have This is bad thoughts of the Creator. So you dupe yourself by placing it up on the gram, placing it up on Facebook. Yeah, all these statuses of righteousness and everything, but at the same time, you're getting high. At the same time, you're still doing you. At the same time, it's still zina. At the same time, it's still stealing. At the same time, it's still this. Come on, Akka. Who do you think you're fooling? Allah Azza wa Jalla says about the munafiqun. Allah Azza wa Jalla says what? They only fool themselves while they're yashurun. And they don't even know it. يُخَادِعُونَ اللَّهَ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَلَا يَخْدَعُونَ إِلَّا أَنفُسَهُمْ They think to deceive Allah and those who believe, but they deceive no one else but themselves. وَلِيَّاضُ بِاللَّهِ Pay attention. He says, وَمَنْ ذَلِكَ أَنَّ مِنْهُ مَنْ ذَا نَصَّحْتَهُ He says, and from that, is that from among them is the one who نَصَّحْتَهُ وَقُتَلَهُ The one whom you advise, you give some advice and you say to him, اتَّكِ اللَّهِ أَدِّبْ مَا عَلَيْكِ اتَّكِ اللَّهِ Fulfill that which has been, uh, has been charged to you as a responsibility. He says, Allahu غَفُورُ rahim." You tell a sinner, you tell an individual who's doing wrong, you say, اتَّكِ اللَّهِ يَا خَيْ do that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command you from the kitab wa sunnah. Give up this stuff that you're doing. Stop being a criminal. Stop being this, stop being that. He turned back and said to you, Allahu ghafur rahim. Allah is all forgiven, most merciful. This is what he says to you. He says, Or it's possible that he read to you the verse, Inna Allah la yakfiru an yushraka ma'ahu. Pay attention. An yushraka bihi wa yakfiru ma duna dhalika li man yasha'a. Al ayah fi surat al nisa. وَكَأَنَّهُ لَمْ يَفْهَمْ قَوْلَهُ In Shaykh Rathamina says as if the individual don't even understand the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal when he said لِمَنْ يَشَاء Allah says, he right, we recite, he said, Shaykh Rathamina said the man might turn around and recite to you the sinner and say to you, indeed Allah forgives indeed Allah, Allah does not forgive the shirt be joined with him in anything but he forgives anything lesser than that to whomsoever he wills he says, so it's as if the person doesn't understand that last part to whomsoever he wills he continues, Because we will say to him, to the sinner, What? Who told you? Huh? What made you think that you were from those whom Allah wills that he was going to forgive? Who told you that? That you were under li man yasha? Who told you that? He says, He says, he says here, Inna Allah la yamkur. Indeed, Allah did not say yakfiru ma duna dalik. Allah did not just stop and say He forgives anything lesser than that. He says, if that would have been the case, and then we would have said, okay, yes, this is possible. He says, if al ma shi'ta illa shirk, then we would have said, yes, do whatever you will, do whatever you like, as long as it's not shirk. He said, however, Allah didn't say that. He says, wa yakfiru ma duna dalik li man yasha, and He forgives anything lesser than that to whomsoever He wills, tying the issue. To his Mashia. This is important. And he said, This is according to Allah Jalla wa ala wisdom. He said, Walasta anta ala jazmin. And you are not the one who is determined, right? Upon any determination, we anna commitment yukfarulahu that you are from those whom Allah Jalla wa ala will forgive. Therefore, you are like Ibn Uqayyim are describing Shaykh Uthameen said, You are the one who was given into false hopes and desires. You're banking on lost hopes. That's what you're doing. And we see the people when they do it, that's what you're doing. You're banking on it. The biggest criminal. I'm going to put up the meme today. You know, I'm going to make myself feel good. Here goes my validation. Allah is going to forgive me. But ain't going to stop doing nothing. Subhanallah, man. Now pay attention to this next line of poetry. He said, Kadahan wa kaddan la yufattaru anhumu ma fihi min ghammin wa min ahzamin ahzani. Meaning, you're going to find that the state 
of these individuals who have preferred this lowly life that's temporarily over that which is everlasting over the Ayakira, this is what you're going to really find about them. You might see the glitter with all of the little trinkets and the little possessions that they might have. You see the glitter. They have a more depressional rate with the people who are rich and famous than you know. They have more, listen to me, you can do a study, go ahead and do your research. There are more problems in the homes and the houses and the hearts of these individuals than you think. You're going to find that they have tiredly and effortlessly and exalted themselves and working non-stop to accumulate what they have accumulated. They have worked it non-stop, as Ibn Qayyim said, but they were not able to abate or not able to slack or cease from themselves therein the feeling of gham, a feeling of sadness, and the feeling of ahzam, of grief and remorse. Shaykh Uthameen, he says, أَنَّهُمْ يَكَدِّهُونَ وَيَعْمَلُونَ وَيُكَدُّونَ وَيُتْبَعُونَ أَنفُسَهُمْ وَبَعْ ذَلِكَ قُلُوبُهُمْ مَمْلُوعَةٌ مِنَ الْغَمِّ وَالْحَزَمِ He said, because you will find that these individuals, they work themselves night and day, tirelessly, rigorously working themselves out. That's all they do. All they can think of, life equates to work. Life equates to work, but what kind of work? Life equates to be a work or a slave into an economy that you're not going to win. That's your work? That's what it equates to? Huh? So you were created to work in an economy that you probably ain't going to win. You're playing a game that's not, you're not even going to win. But this is only thing that's going to come from it. Whoever told you that the delights of this dunya brings about happiness? Whoever told you that? They're lying. Everything that brings you about happiness is not in the lights of this dunya. There are some parts and some aspects of the things from the dunya that can bring a glimpse of some type of uh, happiness. Yes, it's true. But they can't bring the everlasting happiness that you truly need. You understand? They can bring some of that. As we have hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, where he says a righteous wife is one of them. Where he says a nice riding beast. Where he says beautiful smells is one of them. We have many different narrations of mentioning that. But to make that your main focus and that you rigorously tire yourself out, that's what the economy is now. People are working 10 hours. People are working 12 hours. People are working 16 hours. People are working 18 hours a day. They don't have no time for ibadah. They have no time for themselves. They have no time for their family. They have become a slave of the economy. And the compensation that is being exchanged for their work and for their efforts is not even mounting up to what they think they are mounting up to. And then these are these individuals. And they're doing this non-stop. So they're neglecting their deen at the expense of the dunya, chasing something that is fleeting and not something that is wasted. But all they had to do was reverse it. All they had to do was prefer the accurate. All they had to do is prefer the meeting of their Lord. All they had to do is the righteous deeds. All they had to do was have Iman. That's all they had to do. And all of that stuff that they was chasing, they could have got it anyway. All of that which they was looking for, they could have got it anyway. Because tr truly, I want you to pay attention now. I'm getting ready to say something. I want you to get it. You can bring me any financial book. You can bring me any self-help book you want. I'll read them. You can bring them to me. And I'm going to tell you this. All of them, they are in search of what they call pursuit of happiness. This is their main theme. They are in search of what we call pursuit of happiness. And pursuit of happiness in accumulating these possessions, they have lost anyway because they went outside of themselves to search for happiness when they should have been looking within themselves to receive the happiness. But they didn't. So their hearts are in disarray. Their hearts are discontented. And they are not sufficient with whatever they have. Why? Because they are looking for pursuit of happiness. Henceforth, they will sell their soul. They will sell their children. They will sell their family. And don't say they won't. Anytime an individual will prefer to place something that is lowly over that of the well-being of his child or the well-being of his wife or the well-being of, 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 of what's supposed to be responsible for what he's charged for, that individual is selling in reality that over that. Don't tell me that. This is what they're doing because they're in pursuit of a delusional happiness, not in true happiness. Do you understand? So he says here, they work themselves out. And then he tells you what's happening when you look at these individuals. What's going on in their hearts? He tells you. He says, Wallahi la shahadat shahatta hatika sudura ra'aytaha kamarajil nirani. He says, By Allah, if you were to witness what's taking place in their hearts, you will see that inside their breasts is like a kamarajil nirani. And the marajil nirani. Shaykh Rathaymin, he says, it's like a pot of fire. Okay? 
This mirage in the Nirani is like a pot that's boiling with fire. I want you to understand that. He says, Meaning that you can hear the hissing and the flames from the from this from this fire. You can hear it. He didn't even stop. Watch how poetic he gets into this. Guess what's going to be this thing, this this flames that's feeding it? He says, Shikrat Amin, he says, so their hearts, waliyadu billah, is like this boiling flame, faint, this fire-filled pot, due to what's contained in it of hot heatness from this sadness and this grief. For this reason we say, for this reason, we say that these are the individuals of kufra, of disbelief, from the Garabiyin, and other than the Garabiyin, huh? Huh? The Garabiyin, meaning the Westerners, and other than the Westerners, la tadunu annahum fi na'im. Do not think that these individuals are really in the light. He says, wallahi innahum fi jahim. Rally, they are in hell. Subhanallah. He said, rally, they are in hell. Look, he says, because their hearts really is filled with hell. No matter to what extent do it looks beautiful to you, that it has appeared to you, this dunya have looked beautiful for them or have made, made uh, fear seeming to them, rally they are in jaheem. However, they are able to deceive us by what they are calling to or inviting that they are or claiming that they therein are upon the light. And we think that this is the actual reality when in truth it's not. And don't tell me this is not their state. This is their state. But you don't see it. So he's telling you this is their state. That in reality, if you are able to take a glimpse of what's inside their hearts, you will find that it is fire there. Why? What do he mean? Mean to let them in al hummi that that fire is stroke and it is flamed by what? By sadness and by grief and by, 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 um, by grief, by sadness and by what? And by turmoil. And regrets, you will find one from amongst them that if you was to reflect, he would say, what would he be thinking? Should all of this remain of my wealth or should it be removed? What do I have to do? Because he's always in a state of fright. He don't know whether or not he can protect what he has. He don't want it to go anywhere. So we accumulate more. He's in a state of frantic. Would I lose my possessions? Would I lose my home? Would I lose everything that I acquire? This is his mindset. So he even conspired against his sons. He even conspired against his daughters. He even conspired against his family members. It's because if he's wealthy, he's thinking everyone is after his wealth. He's thinking, how can I protect this wealth? He's thinking, how can I actually make this wealth right? So I'm going to leave you out the will. I'm going to leave you out the will. I'm not going to put you in the will. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. Because all he can think about, would it remain or would it be taken away? This is their state there's no safety in that there's no rest in that there's no contentment in that do you hear that that's the reality their hearts are famous he says the same point I just made he said so in reality every time he increase every time he increase in his happiness or delight He's increasing in his regret because he's fear out of fear that it will all be taken away from him. Henceforth, what do they say? Mo money, mo problems. Do they not say that? Do they not say that? Every time there's another problem, you get a new money, there's a new bill. You get new money, there's a new complication. You get new money, there's this to do. You get new money, it's that to do. This is the reality of their hearts, brothers. And sisters, as Allah Jalla Wala say, Yahsabu, Allah says, Yahsabuna Annahum, Yahsabu Kalubuhum, Jamiyan, He said, Yahsabuna Annahum, Jamiyan, Wa Kalubuhum Shatta. Allah says, You would think that, when He was talking about the people, the book of the Jews, rather, He said, You think that their hearts are united, but in reality, they actually, their hearts are divided. It's not united. You, you think it is, but it's not. It's actually divided. Look what, Shikr, look what Ibn Qayyim says next. He says, وَوُكُودُهَا الشَّهَوَاتُ وَالْحَصَرَاتُ وَالْآلَامُ تَخْبُومَةَ الْأَزْمَانِ This is the, listen, this is tremendous. He says that the fuel for this fire 
of sadness and grief, all right, and remorse and all this stuff that's taking place in their heart and their chest, he said the, the fuel for that is their desires and is the regret and the pain and the sadness. And this is how they spend their time going from both of these states. So the moment they want to really enjoy themselves, they can't because they got to worry about somebody taking it. And the moment that they, they, they the regret, they want to worry about this going away or this being depleted. So look what they do. This is their state. It's a frantic state. It's not contentment. And you wonder why the Prophet ﷺ can lay down on date palm trees and why the, the, the kings of Persia and stuff like that was living in their lavish garments. And you wonder why the Prophet ﷺ's heart was at ease. He was on a date palm tree. And you wonder why he, was, he, he can do that. Mali with dunya. You can understand why he can say that. Here is he was the most happiest man on the, 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 the dunya. And you wonder why, how can he reach that state? And you keep saying you can't reach that state. The Prophet ﷺ told you, Hubbu dunya wa kariha al-mawt. That is the reason, the one that will be placed in the hearts of the believers why they will lose because they will prefer the life of this world and they will hate the meeting with their Lord. Do you understand? The opposite of that is preferring the Akira and loving the meeting with their Lord. Do you understand? That's the opposite of that. You can't win towards a people like that. Hearts like that, you can't win. That's why they was the best three virtuous generations. You can't win like that. A heart that had Jannah inside it. You're talking about Jannah that me and you keep reading about, that we keep got to go back and forth to increase our Iman. So sometimes we might get it, sometimes we don't. Sometimes we might feel a bit. We have, what our boy Waste Rahim Allah said, he said we have momentarily enthusiasm. So sometimes we, we get a little spark. Oh, today I feel like I want my Iman's high. I'm boost right now. So you go read a little bit about paradise, not really understanding. No, that the paradise was in the Kalpaki. Kalu, they already traveled there with their hearts. So they was able to work and do these actions because they already knew the gender uh, was the haqqa. We still got to be convincing that gender is true. We don't know that gender is true. We might believe a Hollywood story of Lord of the Rings more than we believe whether or not gender is actually true. They're talking about talking trees. Allah already told you that a tree was going to talk. Huh? It's crazy, right? Look what he says. He says that thing which fuels... These different types is the desires and the regrets and the loss for what that which they have lost in the dunya. He said, He said, each one of them wants it to be like the second. He said, so if they lose one of the things, one of the twos, and then it increased them nothing but in sadness, grief and remorse and pain, whether it takes pain in the heart or pain in the body and they will never leave from doing going through this state subhanallah they are dead while they are alive do you get that he said that their bodies are being raised like as if being brought forth from the grave he says actually in reality what happened here is that their souls right called the kubira ma'abdani it seemed that they already prepared their grave they are dead while they are alive they have their bodies right but they are dead they are in a state of chaos do you see that ay kubur meaning they have dug their own graves abdanu hiya kubur had alwar khabitha allati laysa indaha illa hamum wal ahzan that the, 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 the grave for these individuals that they have built for themselves is nothing but filled with sadness, grief, and remorse. That's what you get from selling your deen to the dunya. That's what you get. That's what you get. <laughs> you don't even know the secret, the secret of any desire. The secret of any desire that you're given is actually fleeting. It never lasts. Okay, I'll wait. That honeymoon that you had with the wife, the honeymoon you had with the, the husband, how long did it last? That pleasure that you got from so-and-so, how long did it last? We can't even keep a marriage today. Be real. How long does it last? Because everybody wants the essence type of love. The high type of love. Get me high. Fans me out. This is what we want, right? And soon when the representative go away, it used to last three months. You can have someone show you the best side of themselves for three months, hiding whatever else they have, right? And then three months, you know, you can get that. That don't even last no more. Two weeks of this, it's a shout out. A month, it's shout out, huh? Right back. So nobody want to get married. Nobody trusting. I want to jump out there. I want to marry nobody. Why? Nobody want to get crushed, huh? Because you didn't all miss the point. You was basing a marriage and a union off of something that wasn't correct in the first place. Why would you worry about placing your happiness in the hand of another person? Huh? Your happiness is tied to the creator, not to the creation. 
and you kept doing it and you keep doing it and this is why you keep finding yourself in that vulnerable state and this is all you're going to get this is the grave of those who only have hamum and all of this sadness and grief a poor person a poor person a true poor person and once you understand the difference now see you have two types of poverty you have the impoverished person who is impoverished spiritually and that's the death of the heart. That's worse than impoverishing financially, physically, and whatever. You understand? So a poor person who is spiritually rich is not sad and boggled down with life. They can actually go through life. You understand? A poor person who is spiritually deprived but has some type of stuff from the dunya, that person is a person that's going to be sad and filled with grief. You understand? That person can't get ahead. He's stuck between two things. One, why I can't have what they have. Two, why I'm not here where I'm at. And so he doesn't fall in line with the cutter. He doesn't understand the concept of cutter. He don't know that whatever he was going to get anyway was already prescribed for him when he was in the womb of his mother as a fetus. Fetus. That was already understood. He don't understand that every provision that was already, it was already written out for him. He can't know that. Because what in his mind is, I should be getting what they got, what makes them better. I should be with that. So he's in a constant state of sadness and grief because he's never going to get it. Or he's never going to have it, so he's never going to be at rest. But the person who is spiritually rich and has Iman, he's not worrying about that. Because the same one who gave it to them can give it to him. So he knows where to go at. The same thing that they have, he understands that they're going to be tried with that. And he knows that his Lord, he is the one who has delegated his provisions. And if he wanted to increase them more, he would. And that provisions is not restricted to possessions and wealth. He knows that. So he knows that a provision, Iman is provision. You don't even know that, right? Knowledge is provision. You don't know that, right? Huh? Doing righteous actions is provisions. It's risk. All of that is risk. And it's being proportioned. So you think you're going to be this person who's going to have a whole lot of Iman, or risk, and at the same time have a whole lot of wealth? Or have a whole lot of this? No, Allah is giving you one and you're not even satisfied with the risk that he gave you that you think that isn't even risk. You want this which is lowly over that which is risk. No, nah, give me my iman. I'll take that. Give me my iman. I'll take that. Henceforth, you can see why the companions and, you know, there's no offense towards the sisters. At all, this is no offense towards the sisters. You can see why the noble companion his wife was uh, nagging him one time, and I don't want to take too long, but his wife was nagging him about something of some wealth that he got from Umar ibn Khattab. They sent him some wealth, right? And this companion, he took the wealth and he, took, he went outside and dispersed the wealth. He, he fed people that was in need and so forth like that. And his wife was like, okay, well, we, you know, we can use that money that Umar sent you. And he was like, okay, um, I gave it to a loaner, like, you know, a lo loaner, you know. I gave it to someone who's like a loan. He's loaned me this. And I gave it and want to get it back. So about 15 days passed by. She said, don't you think it's about time you go collect that, um, uh, that debt? Right? So he says, he goes out and he comes back. And he says to his wife, he says, because she kept nagging him. He says to her, and he looks to her. And this can seem kind of harsh, but I want you to understand where I'm going at with this point. You can see how he can get to this thing. He says, if the woman of paradise was to expose her bosom, right? I might get in trouble for the saying that. This is not against any sisters. If a woman was the woman Horain he's talking about was to expose her bosoms, right? It would cover half of the horizons, right? He says, I can see me leaving you for a woman agenda, but cannot see myself leaving a woman agenda for you. Right? Now, I want you to understand this point. The point here is not the wife, because his wife is I'm that beautiful. But he's trying to get her to understand that the price for Jannah is me distributing, giving my good doing good deeds. That was my price. So I went out and dispersed our, the money that I got from Omar so I can accumulate more good deeds is what I was doing so I can get in the Jannah. It was not about the woman. But he's saying that this is the, the, the uh, rewards that comes from Jannah, right? So I'm not going to give that up for you in this lowly life. I'm going to give you up for the everlasting life. That's what he was saying. So it wasn't that he was speaking down his wife. That was his wife. But he was trying to get her to understand the reality of the dunya. This is the heart that prefers that. 
you wonder why you cannot move on because you don't have the right type of happiness that you need to have in your heart. I'm going to finish it right now. Hadi Bumin al-Rikli, he says here, he mentioned this last part here. He says that they, they actually dug their graves, meaning they're working out Titus. What was not Allah Yaktalif? He says here, Arawahukum fi wahsha. Yanahu lam ta'nis billahi azza wa jal. Wal ta'nis bima tarajuhu min rahmati. Fahiya fi wahsha min Allah wa fi wahsha min ibad Allah. Wali hadha kis nafsa ka'an. Ida fa'auta ma'asiya tajdu annaka tawahsha min al-nas. Fakan al-nas yaqruna ala safahat wa jihika. But tajdu annaka kujlan wa hatta lau lam ya'lam anka nasu shayan. Pay attention to what he's getting ready to say now. He's saying that their, their souls are in a state of fright. Their souls are in a state of fright. This is because they don't have any mercy, have any hope really in Allah Azza wa Jal. And he says when they don't place any hope into Allah Azza wa Jal or hope with that which is from his mercy, he says then you find them being in a fright from Allah and a fright from the creation. All right? And then you says, well, he had that kiss nafsa. He said, with this, now you can weigh yourself. Weigh yourself with this. He said, when you do a, a sin or disobedience, you find that yourself being afraid of people because you did the sin, right? He says, uh, uh, it's as if when the people look at you, it's like they're reading your book of deeds. This is how frightful you become a people, right? You do a sin or disobedience, nobody knows that you did it, but Allah, right? But you think everybody else know what you have done in the primus or the, or the confinement or concealment or in privacy. But you come out and you think that it's like people can read it on your face. You're afraid of the actual people more so than afraid of the creator. So it's like they're reading your book of deeds right in front of your face. From your face, it's like they're reading it. He says, um, uh, he says So other words he says here that You think no one knows that you did this But however because you are afraid of the people And you have this fright It's, it's, it's when you do a sin It's as if you, you become afraid of the people Every time you do a sin It's as if they are witnessing um, You doing this sin He says as as if you say It's like they are reading what's in my pocket This is what he's talking about The people who store up and accumulate And, and, and prefer the life of this dunya He says He says They are at war With this um, With this um, servitude Which they were created for and he said, what was the servitude that they were created for? He says, they were created for, um, he says, they were created to be servants to Allah as a wajal, all right? And to be his servants. He says, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us to be his servants, I mean. He says, فَبُولُ بِرِكِنْ نَفْسِ وَالشَّيْطَانِ He's breaking down this line of poetry of Ibn, of Ibn Qayyim. He says, so they became at war with the true servitude. That was the servitude of Allah. And what they did instead, they offered to be enslaved to their soul, to their desires, and to the shaitan. So they gave up the servitude of Allah for the servitude of their desires in the shaitan. That's deep. You see that? They gave up the servitude of Allah for the servitude of their desires in the shaitan. That's deep. So either way, he's telling you that you're either going to be in service of Allah or in service of your desires in shaitan. That's it. There's no other way you're going to get around it. So it's either you're in service of Allah or you're in service of the shaitan and your desires. Look at that. He said, they gave up that servitude. They became the servants of the desires and the shaitan. That's t Allah says in the Quran, and he brings this verse, I mean, he brings this as alluding to that verse. What they mean says, would you have changed something as Allah says when Musa said to the children of Israel when he was asking, when Allah sent down the men and the quills, they wanted, the, uh, they wanted the, um, the, the lentils, the onions and everything from the earth. And he says, would you exchange that which is lowly for that which is better, right? He said, this is deep. SubhanAllah. Deep. Look what he's saying. They really believe that by them doing what they're doing, by being at war with the servitude, which they consider is a, a freedom. Most people don't want to follow sunnah. Most people don't want to follow rules and regulations in society because it's like it's impairing or it's, it's hindering them from being true free. And so everybody want to be at liberty, right? Everybody want liberty. Everybody want to be free. And this is the land of the, you know, the land of the free, right? So everybody wants to be free. They want to be free to do what they want to do, how they want to do. Hence forth the phrase, doing me. You do you. 
People want that. Everybody wants the concept of me doing me and you doing you. Leave me be. Let me do me. You do you. Don't we got that concept? So you find an individual doing them. And the reality should have showed you that you wasn't really intelligent. Because when you go back and retrace their footsteps on them doing them, I guarantee you it's more non-beneficial than it is. I mean, it's more harmful than beneficial. Everybody that's left at liberty to do themselves, they harm themselves more than they benefit themselves. Is I'm lying or not? Go back and retrace everyone's footsteps. Everybody that took the, the stance of liberty, that I want to do me, have found themselves in more grief, more sadness and pain than they found themselves in anything else. This is what they want to do. They are making this claim that I need to be at free. You know, I need to be free. So they give you the understanding that financial freedom is to be free from taxes and to be free to live your life and luxury when you want to live it, right? So they, 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 they're trying their ways to become free. This is what they want. They want liberty. But they didn't know that that liberty was in true servitude to Allah as a wajal. They didn't understand that. So they exchanged that servitude for Allah, which was the true liberty, and they exchanged it for the servitude of the shaitan, which is humiliation and loss in this life and the hereafter. That's what they just sold. They don't even know. They don't even know. They just gave up both this life and the next, and they don't even understand it. He says, Pay attention now. They are not pleased with that which they have chosen for them, all right, for themselves. Because the right? He is not pleased with that which they have chosen. They have chosen it. They linofusian for themselves. Because the Indeed, they have become um, pleased with um, with discriminations. With Hiramani, he says, He says the intelligent person. All right. So Shaykh they mean to be the better understanding. Meaning they're not pleased with what they have chosen, right? Meaning that what they have preferred for themselves. Shikha Dameen says, meaning the intelligent person, he's not pleased with what he found, the likes of these individuals being pleased for with themselves. He don't see that as being pleased. He's not pleased with that. He says, well, He says, and me, may Allah make us, from amongst, uh, make us and you from amongst them. He says, the intelligent person, he is pleased with what he found the messengers and their followers doing. He's not pleased with what he's seeing these people preferring the dunya. He's not pleased with that. That's not his, that doesn't please him. Because he see the route that that is. He, he can see it. You don't need a rock in science. Anyone can see that. Right? He sees that. He says, Now, in this line of poetry, he's alluding to a hadith. He says here, if the dunya, Ibn Qayyim said, if the dunya was equivalent to a wing of a mosquito, then our Lord would not give anyone from those who have kufr disbelief something to drink from it. If it meant that much to Allah as a wajal, the wing of a mosquito, you already know how flimsy that is, right? If it meant that much to him, he would not give someone who say he's an atheist and don't believe that he'll deny his very existence a drink of water. This is actually a hadith, right? He brings this line of poetry. Uh, Shaykh Uthameen says, what can, what, what that he can hadith. This line of poetry is like it comes in a hadith. Law kana ta dunya ta'adilu indallahi janaha al urda. That have the dunya been equated or equivalent to Allah as a wajal, um, as a wing of a mosquito. Ma saqa kafir and minha sharabata ma, meaning that a non believer would not even drink anything from it. All right? This is from the hadith that is collected by at tirmidhi Id in al kafir laysa ahla ma'an an Allah al yunaimu al kafir. He says, so if the reality is that the, the, the non-believer, he is not even from the people of Allah Azza wa Jal, right? Those who are going to be entitled from Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is still granting him the light, even though he deny Allah's existence in this world. Because this dunya is nothing to Allah. Henceforth, pay attention to what he's going to say next in the next line of poetry. He says, He says, however, Allah is, meaning this dunya, however it, this dunya, by Allah is more despicable to him, more disgraced and more lowly and more base to him than that wing of that mosquito, right? Of one of the uh, lesser uh, birds, right? Meaning that the dunya is more despicable and lowly 
in the sight of Allah than the wing of this mosquito. وَلِهَذَا إِذَا صَلَّ إِنسَانَ رَقَةَ الْفَجْرِ صَارَ ذَلِكَ قَيْرَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَ وَمَا فِيهَا Pay attention. He says, for this reason, Shaykh Uthameen says, a person can perform two units of prayer before fajr and they become better than the dunya and everything in it. Allahu <laughs> Akbar. That's another hadith, uh, by the way. He says, كُلُّ الدُّنْيَ مُنْدُ خُلِقَتْ إِلَى أَنْ تَفْنَى هَتَانِ رَقَّتَانِ خَيْرُ مِنْهَا He says, the whole entire dunya, since it's been created into it's actually going to cease to be exist, he says that these two rak'at are better than it. SubhanAllah. <laughs> he says, كَمْ تَسْتَعِبُ الرَقَّتَانِ مِنَ الزَّمِنِ خمسة دقاء. He says, so let's look at how long it really takes to perform these two units of prayer. He says, really, it only takes about five minutes to do wudu, five minutes to, uh, <laughs> and five minutes to perform the prayer. He says, that actually equates to the dunya. Ten minutes. <laughs> he says, even a dunya la tasawa in the lahi as a shay'an. Therefore, the dunya doesn't mean anything to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all. That's what he's telling me. And these two rakats is better than the dunya. And everything in it, from the beginning it was created to, since it was created to, it's, it's no longer going to exist. Come on, man, are you putting all of that in this dunya? You putting all of that in this dunya? Really? You putting all of that in this dunya, seriously? You're not intelligent, man. Really, though, seriously? You putting all of that in this? What type of thoughts do you have of the creator? You know you're going to die. I mean, that's, everyone can't deny that. You know you're going to die, but you're putting that much time and that much energy into this dunya? That it mean that much? And what I mean by that, I mean you attach your heart to it. You attach your heart to it. You, are, you gotta be... Come on, man. We get ready to stop. وَلَقَرَ تَوَدْ بَعْدُ عَنْ أَصْحَابِهَا فَالسَّعْدُ مِنْهَا حَلَّ فِي الدَّبَرَانِ تَوَلَ عَنْ حَابِهَا حَقِيقَةً حُكْمًا He says, so for this reason, you find that the people of it, they turn away from it. They turn away from it. Meaning what? In reality, Shaykh Rathameen says, how do they turn away from it? Right? They turn away from its people, how? In reality and in ruling. In reality, he says, with the people of this dunya, what they do, actually how they turn away from it, or it turns away from them, rather. He says, from his people, meaning that the dunya turns away from them. What happens is that the dunya itself turns away from them. That's what he's saying. And he said, how does this happen? It happens in reality, and it happens in ruling. When the people of this dunya are poor, right? And he says, we're going to set forth an example. For a person, he doesn't have any portion. He doesn't have nothing from the dunya. He says, in this example, they say, this person is like um, is poor. And, I, and when he's saying here, I think he's talking about the scholars. He says, when they say that Mithil, his examples is the poor, poor uh, provinces of a person who's a Christian, meaning that he doesn't have no deen nor dunya, right? Nothing from his dunya and nor deen. He says, He says, so in reality, the dunya have turned away from these people who seek it rigorously, in reality, when they do not enjoy, take any enjoyment from it, right? He says, our hookman, or in ruling, it turns away from them, even if they enjoy it therein, but they soon shall part from it. Had the Naim and Korban. Meaning that they should soon closely part from it. So basically, so that you understand what he's saying. He's saying that all of this time that you're working, preferring this dunya, this lowly life that means nothing, the mosquito to Allah is a wajal. All of what you're doing, the dunya turns away from you from itself, from either two ways. One, you're either going to get nothing from it, right? Or even if you do get something from it, that soon should depart from you. Ain't that crazy? That's the reality. Whatever you get from it is soon going to be over, or you get nothing from it. So you, you, you're going all crazy over it? I mean, this is, this is deep. And then he says, well, says, meaning, Meaning, meaning you don't get nothing from it. You don't get nothing from it for loving it passionately like that. As Allah Azza wa Jalla says, Allah Azza wa Jalla said, Indeed, man is ungrateful to his Lord. 
and to this he is ever witness for that. For he loved wealth passionately. He thinks that his wealth will last forever. Allah says, Right? Allah Azzawajal mentioned about this wealth that he thinks that he have, hubban jamman jamma, that this individual think that this wealth that he has, he loves it so violently, so passionately, as if it's going to last for long. It's not. It's not going to last. F1. Right? It's not going to last. So the problem comes in that he don't understand this. Right? So Shikr Demini says here, Aina aina wafa'u min ghadir al-khawani. Jawab la yujit. He says, so where's this wafa? Where's this delegation? Where's this compensation that this person who's seeking this dunya, he's ghadir and qawwan? He means it's not there. What do you mean by ghadir and qawwan? Meaning he's deceived. This delusion. Where he's going to get it from? Where is he going to find it? He said, the answer is not. He's not going to find it. He said, ghadir and qawwan ala yumkina yufiya laka. فَالدُّنْيَا لَا يُرْتَجَ مِنْهَا وَفَاءُ لِمَنْ يُحِبُّونَهَا وَيُقَدِّمُونَهَا عَلَىٰ آكِرًا بَلْ بِالْعَقْسْ أَيْنَ وَفَاءُ مِنْ غَادِرُ خَوَّانِ He says the dunya, whether you love it or not, it's not you're not going to possess it. <laughs> That's the deception of the dunya. You're not going to be able to possess it. Huh? You get anything a little bit from it, it betrays you. Don't you see it? It betrays you. You're not even going to possess it. Huh? SubhanAllah. He says... تُبِعَتْ عَلَىٰ كَدَرٍ فَكَيْفَ تَنَالُهَا صَفْوًا هَذَا قَطُّ فِي الْإِمْكَانِ جواب لا ما دامت طبيعتها الكدر فكيف تصوى وكان الشيخ أسلام التيمية and he brings two lines of poetry here ending with those two tremendous lines of poetry from Ibn Taymiyyah but he's telling you that this person would tire himself out rigorously and how would he ask, be able to ascertain this actual dunya he's not going to be able to get it in reality, even though he got something from the possessions, and last but not least, he mentions that Ya Ashiq Dunya Zamani. He says, O oh, person who passionately loves this dunya, who passionately loves this dunya, he says, Ta He says, So even if something from the dunya was to remain, then the dunya itself would not remain because you should soon part from it. So all of this time that you are fighting for and rigorously trying to hold on to, you're not going to get it. And at the end he says here, Awa ma sabmita bala ra'ayta masari al shaq Jawab bala. He says, did you not hear bala? Meaning like this is like a response. You know how the Prophet ﷺ says, it's not such and such going to happen. And they say bala, of course, right? It's a response, right? He says, ra'ayta masari al shaq he says, you watch and you get to see the wrestling of those who passionately love this dunya that they do from the time of youth to the time if they make it to old age. They are fighting from the time of youth to the time of old age. They're spending their lives fighting for a world that is fleeting and temporary. He says, Shaykh Tami Kama, he says, Bala ra'ayna dunya yamutu fiha kabir wa yamutu fiha shabab. He says that, what do we see? We see the dunya. We see that they're inside this dunya, the old and the young die. All right? And it is the youth. They can die at the time. The rich people die. The poor people die. He said, there's no, nothing from it that remains therein from the people. That they actually going to arrive to a specific point in life. What he's saying here is that there is nothing guaranteed or point that a person is going to reach a certain age and then die. No one does that. People die when they're young, they die when they're old, they die when they're this infants, they die when they're toddlers, they die when they in the strong years, they die this. There's no set age that you want to reach guaranteed in this life that you're going to get it. It doesn't work that way. Everyone dies. At times different for them that Allah has decreed. No one is going to die at a set time. So you can't even say, I'm going to live my life from age 20 to age 40. I'm going to do all my best stuff here. And then I'm going to die at the age 80. You can't even do that. Because you can die at the age as at weeks old. You can die as an infant. You can die as a toddler. You can die, etc, etc, etc. You understand? 
So there's nothing guaranteed in the dunya. And that's the weird thing about it. We all know that there's nothing guaranteed in the dunya except the death itself. And except the fact that it will perish. Except that it is actually perishable. We know all of these things, but yet our intellect seems to be hanging on the shelf. Because we still, no matter how many, we can listen to all this all day. No matter how long we hear all of this stuff here. We all can know that the dunya is perishable. We all know that there's nothing in it. But yet and still, we still fight over it. We're still sad over it. We're still angry over it. We're still grieve over it. We're still like this. And then we have the nerve to take that anger and take that grief and take that sadness and direct it towards the Creator. You the one chose this dunya. I didn't tell you to chose it. Allah said, get you all down, he told our parents. And what did he say? Get you all down, jami'an. You're not paying attention to the verse. What did Allah says? He said he sent them down to this dunya that is despicable and low. But he told them, But if some huda come to you, and it did come to them, if some huda, Allah Jalla says he sent them the guidance, if it comes to you, whoever follows my guidance, two things will be removed from them. They will not experience it. They will not feel it. They will not have it. Two things that's going to happen. What is it? If they follow the guidance of Allah, He promised them that they will not fear. And what is this cold fear? Meaning they won't fear for that which takes place. Right? They won't have fear for that which takes place. They will not fear, nor will they have what? Grief. They won't fear for that which takes place. They don't need to have any anxiety for the accurate, meaning for the future events, because they know if they stick upon this guidance, where they're going to end up at. They're going to end up in safety. But they don't have no grief. Yahzanun hasn't for that which passed them by. Anything that they have experienced from pain, anything they experienced from loss, anything they experienced from anything that they have, they don't have to feel that. This is the guarantee to follow the guidance. And these people didn't do that. So when you don't do that and you prefer this dunya, don't you get mad. Don't you point your finger and tell you because you better on a losing horse that this is the problem of Allah. This ain't the problem. Well, that's the problem with you. Your depression is from you. It ain't from no one else. It's from you. You prefer the dunya over that which is the Acura, which was giving you safety, but you prefer something lowly that doesn't love you in the first place. Where do you can find me that the dunya love you? Allah what he tells us about Pharaoh when Pharaoh passed by, he, when Pharaoh passed, what did he say about Pharaoh and his people? He said that the heavens nor the earth cried for Pharaoh. The heavens and the earth did not cry for Pharaoh. You understand what I'm saying? Nor his people. No one shed a tear for him. So tell me, why in the world are you sitting here putting all of your passion and love into the dunya? Where's our intellect? Where's our intellect, man? We have the Quran. It's not possible. I'm going to leave you with this last beautiful statement and then I'm done, inshallah. They says, al iktiabu man yash'uru It says, man yash'uru bil iktiabi wal Qur'anu mawjudun they say whoever suffers from depression while the Quran is in his present, while the Quran is in his reach, whoever is suffering from depression while he had the speech of Allah in his reach, whoever suffers from depression while he can turn to the guidance of Allah while he's here, he is like the one who is thirsty while water is present. He is like the one who is thirsty while water is present. Does it make any sense for you to be thirsty and you can get the water right there? Would you deprive yourself of that? You have the Quran right here. Why are you not turning to that? You have all of your problems and you're not going to the Quran and turning to that? SubhanAllah Adheem. Whatever we said that was incorrect in our translation uh, was from ourselves and the shaitan. Whoever said it's correct it's from Allah. Jalla Do not forget, brothers and sisters, the mah for Jannah is what? Your uh, belief and righteous actions. And the mah for the dunya is your deen. All right? So don't sell your deen for something lowly because every time you fall in love with the dunya, you lose the deen. They don't, they don't actually coincide, and coincide or exist in the same heart. So it's either you're going to have love for the deen, right? And you're going to save your deen and you're going to pay your mahar for jannah. Or you're going to have love for the dunya and you're going to lose your deen and that's your mahar for dunya. All right? So do not forget that, inshaAllah. Subhanakallah wa bihamdi wa ashadu wa la'an astaghfiru tu wa la'an